Folks, the bottom line is this. How did we get here? How did this happen? Did Michaela Bryant have to die? This is clearly a failure of our society as a whole. There are definitely some very specific guilty people in this case, but on some level, we are all responsible. Hello, my friends, J.R. Dukes with jrdukes.com coming at you with another video. Unfortunately, we have another police shooting to talk about. I hope by going through this particular case uh, that we probably are all familiar with by this point of Makia Bryant of Columbus, Ohio, that we can calmly talk about this particular matter. And I got some observations that I think will greatly help us discuss the matter. At least that's my hope. At any rate, uh, we have Makia Bryant, a 16-year-old foster child who was apparently at one time living with her foster mother at the residence where this tragedy happened. And CNN wrote a good article about this, and I will quote some from their article uh, that was updated April 22nd at 9.35 by Ray Sanchez. I think they did a decent job on this article and kind of piecing it all together. At any rate, there's a birthday party going on for the foster mother. And Mikia and two other young women are at this party, and apparently they have a fight pertaining to house cleaning or something to do with the property. So it's basically a whole lot to do with nothing. And obviously, this particular situation, this quivering, this fighting, escalated, to put it mildly. And we all know what happened. We can see the tape and the... Uh, uh, the 16-year-old Micaiah was killed by a responding police officer. The police officer's name is Nicholas Reardon. Public records show that he was a police officer starting back in December 2019. The, department, the department's name is the uh, Columbus, Ohio Division of Police, more commonly called the Columbus Police Department. At any rate, about the same time that the other big trial was going on for uh, the uh, George Floyd verdict with uh, the Chauvin case. About the same time you had this particular incident going on in which a young lady, 16 years old, lost her life. There's a few things I want to talk about and I want to analyze this particular case. Now, those of you who have been listening to my videos know that I am not particularly the most fondest member of the police. I am also not the kind of person that is one of these defund the police or we do not need police. That is just simply not my position at all. I don't think that that's a logical decision. We have to have police. We have to have law and order. We have to have protection. When you need help, you need to have someone on the line that can come help you. Having said that, I am fully aware that there are many injustices that go on with the police. I myself have had run-ins with the police that, let's just say, they were not fair. They definitely were not professional, and it definitely left me with a bad feeling as far as the police in general are concerned. What I think needs to happen with the police is not an outright dismantling of police, but rather police reform, true police reform. And that's what I hope that we can achieve by having an open, calm dialect like we're doing right now. When you have a comment or you have something to say or if you'd like to add something, please do so in the comments below. Please be mindful that your comments need to be appropriate. I'm not looking for any kind of profane or nastiness. That just simply doesn't accomplish nothing, and that's definitely not anything this channel is part of. At any rate... There are, there are a couple observations I have about this particular case. I have said many times before on camera that it's my firm belief that the news media in general is what is a big contributing factor to stoking racial fears, racial animosity between blacks, whites, Mexicans, whatever, it, it uh, Latinos, wh whatever the situation is, I believe that the news media basically enjoys, basically they make money off keeping us all hooked on the news. And the way they keep us all hooked on the news is by basically 24-7 talking about how wrong everything is, how bad our country is, how unjust everything is. They 
keep us engaged almost like a game theory of sorts. They know that they have to find some way to keep us coming back to the news, and the way they do that is by sensationalizing things and making you think that, frankly, the sky is falling all the time. Now, in this particular case, there's no doubt this is a tragedy. No matter how you slice this up, no matter how you look at it, a young 16-year-old woman, a young child lost her life, and that is a terrible tragedy. At the same time, we had the news media, Pacific, uh, specifically NBC News, that clearly, in my opinion, and based on other news stories that I have read, clearly manipulated their initial reporting pertaining to this case to make it seem like another white cop on black individual shooting for no reason whatsoever. The 911 call that they initially reported publicly was heavily omitted to just basically carry the last line that says we need the police out here right away. They conveniently left off the entire 911 call that preceded that statement that was clearly stating that there was somebody with a knife and it was a grave, deathly, deadly type of situation. At any rate, the news media, the large news media, needs to knock this off. And as citizens, as consumers, as just Americans, we need to demand better, we need to expect better, and we need to call out the mainstream news media when they engage in this type of behavior. It is just wrong, and it just makes us all angry, and it's disinformation, and it will not help solve anything. Additionally, in this particular case, you have the uh, NBA star LeBron James that sent out a tweet, and I'll try to include pictures of what I'm talking about uh, once I start editing this video, so hopefully you'll see a little bit more of what I'm talking about. But at any rate, he made a Twitter post that has since been deleted, and essentially he had a picture of the officer, Officer Nicholas Reardon, and the caption basically said something to the effect of, you're next. Now, that's highly subjective. I thought that meant commit violence against this particular person, or that this person was the next person to have a violent act committed against him. I heard another person make the comment that they thought it meant that this particular officer would be the next officer that would be prosecuted. At any rate, the tweet has since, rightly so in my estimation, been deleted, and it's just highly inappropriate. Now, again, I like LeBron James. I definitely admire him as far as wanting to voice his concerns, voice what he sees as injustice, and I think all of that is appropriate, and frankly, I commend him for that. I think that being passionate about something and wanting to help make your society a better society, especially with the platform he has, is a great idea. However, you have to make sure you get the facts straight and you know the full and whole truth before you come out swinging, especially from an individual that is looked up to like Mr. LeBron James. Again, this is just my humble opinion and my observations, and they're my opinions only. In this particular case, it's very clear after reviewing the videotape that this officer, this officer Nicholas Reardon, had a snap decision to make in less of a second. If you look at the videotape, it is very clear that this 16-year-old, this uh, Micaiah, Micaiah Bryant, came at uh, let's just call her girl number one, with a knife, and it appears that she fell backwards. Oddly enough, there's also some other male figure that looked like he kicked her when she was down on the ground. I'm assuming more will be coming in this particular case relating to that assault, that at least it looked like an assault to me on the tape. At any rate, then she turned her attention to, let's just call her uh, woman number two, and she was pinning her back up against the car. She had a knife in this hand, and you can clearly see in the videotape, and again, I'll try to include some images about this, and it's clear she raised her hand above her head or at least sideways and was about to plunge that knife into uh, this woman number two. At that instant, the police officer made the decision that he had to take a life to save a life. At any rate, it is what it is, and it just explains 
all the more importance why we should never rush to judgment. We have to take all the facts in and then make a decision. And folks, let's be honest about it. As I've told you before, I have a lot of beefs when it comes to the police. I have a lot of issues that uh, I think are not right. I know there's a lot of injustices. I know that things are not what they should be. At the same time, Every time there's a police shooting, it does not mean it's racist. It does not mean it's wrong. It does not mean there's criminal intent on the part of the officer. And we at least owe the police time to explain themselves, time for the case to be investigated. I think a rush to judgment is easy to conclude, but we need to resist that type of feelings to where we want to conclude something right away. Uh, oftentimes we see something and then when we look at the evidence in its totality, we come up with another conclusion. We need to be appreciative of the good police officers that are out there that are there to come to our aid and to our defense. Had he not been there at that time, it's highly possible, highly probable that young lady, number two, would have been hurt and or killed. It's also important to remember that each and every case must always be looked at based on its own facts. Just because there's one bad cop that's been exposed, it does not mean that every police officer is a bad police officer. It's important that you keep that in mind every time you hear or see about another police-involved shooting. Another point that I think this case brings to light is we need to look at technologies that can stop somebody from plunging a knife in someone else without having to resort to lethal force. I understand that a taser in this particular example might not have worked in time. It might not have been effective in time. I don't know. I'm not an expert on these type of technologies, but I will tell you we have a country that can send a man to the moon. I am certain there are technologies that can be invested in that can stop a person immediately, almost, if not more effectively, than a bullet. And I really think that is something we need to consider and we need to look at heavily. It's also important to note that the responding officer, this officer, Nicholas Reardon, in the words of the police chief, was providing aid and trying to save this young woman's life. In his words, it was almost immediately. So I think that everybody needs to be made aware of that. It wasn't like this cop went out there with the intention of killing somebody. Unlike the Chauvin case, this particular officer was apparently concerned with the life of the 16-year-old and was trying to administer life-saving aid almost immediately and frankly, I commend him for doing so. My friends, I am fully aware of the need for police reform. I am not blind to the fact that there are injustices in our policing system, frankly, in our entire judicial system. I know that life is not fair and never is fair, but we can do better as a society, and we can find a way to have a better police department all over the United States. At the same time, let's each one of us examine ourselves and pledge to ourselves not to rush the judgment on every single case, and let's hold hands, so to speak, in a Christian type of unity and love and try to find a way to calmly but immediately come up with viable, meaningful solutions to the problems that we're plagued with in our police department. Folks, I want you to know that things are not as bad as they seem. We actually have it pretty darn good in our country. There's a lot of other countries out there that if you call the police, they're going to show up and they're going to do much worse to you if they choose to do so. I know for a fact in some countries you show up, the police department will simply rob you and take your money and there's really nothing you can do about it. The point is, in our country, we have problems, but we have a great country. And together, I am a firm believer that we can make it an even better country. At any rate, I do appreciate you tuning in for this video. I want you to always remember to have that free mind and never give up. I am J.R. Dukes.